I want to start off by a quote of this professor in uh, doing research on earthworms in Russia. And this is what he said, nobody and nothing can be compared with earthworms in the positive influence on the whole living nature. They create soil and everything that lives in it. They are the most numerous animals on earth and the main creatures converting all organic matter into soil humus, providing soil's fertility and a biosphere's function, disinfecting, neutralizing, protective, and destructive. That is an earthworm. People, we have a misconception. Earthworms are animals. Only animal with a complete different immune system. In fact, they don't have an immune system. Uh, they don't have teeth either. So they're a bit like a kid born, you know, or like an old man, you know, there's no teeth left. <laughs> uh, and this is something to remember. Uh, they live in an environment that's completely rotten. Uh, and the more rotten, the better they survive. Uh, earthworms are the most numerous animals, as that quote said, 3,000 plus species. Smallest about two millimeter, the largest seven meters. You can get cocoons. Each cocoon you can lay in good conditions, a cocoon every day or every third day, and uh, babies three to ten can hatch out of each cocoon. And this is why they can multiply at such a terrific rate. This, this is just a unit, very simple unit, and this produced 500 tons, and that's enough vermicompost to farm 500 hectares of agricultural land. All that's needed. Earthworms have a unique ability, and I think, and I know, that it can help Africa with their food problem. The moment you go high-tech, and the moment you go the normal cultivation practices in Africa, you're in trouble. The reason for that is extreme climate conditions. Soil deteriorate in four to five years all over Africa. So the moment you start cultivation, you start destroying the ecosystem. There's three groups of earthworms. They work in conjunction with each other, the epigist. This is the one that's most commonly used for vermicomposting or waste management. They live in dung, leaf litter, anything that's organic. And then you get the anises, the ones that's living in the soil, the ones you find in your garden. And then you get the third group, the endogist that lives deep down, but there's a mixture between epigist, anisist, and endogist. They can invade each other's territory. But this is not what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the ability of earthworm to create and to purify and to sanitize soil. Uh, this is a guy who gave this model to us, just the three gut systems. And just to tell you how incredible earthworms are, the first thing they do after they suck up food, they change the pH. They change the pH to 6.5, optimum for most crops. That's the first thing an earthworm does when it ingests food. The second thing, it digests its own food. Another interesting thing, it distinguishes between pathogens and beneficial microorganisms. And it lives off bacteria. That's why you give them good, clean food and they suffer because they want rotten stuff. And the more rotten, or dung, the better for them. And this is the second part. And then we come to another interesting thing. The bacteria and organisms that, that is beneficial to the soil is actually increased to a thousand times easily going through the intestine of an earthworm. On top of that, it produces enzymes, and that opened a whole new field People don't realize these enzymes are used for more than 50 common human diseases. They have extracted uh, pharma pharmaceutical uh, enzymes that could be used for things from schizophrenia, high blood pressure, hypertension, asthma, you name it, all extracted from earthworms. On top of that, these enzymes 
uh, is so powerful that there's at the moment about 8,000 scientists in Russia alone working on these uh, uh, postgraduate uh, research done on the enzymes in an earthworm. And they're getting nowhere. The second, another thing that happens, <laughs> it's changed. Why I say that? You're laughing. That's good. <laughs> A uh, second thing that happens also with the enzyme, it's, th there's an enzyme in an earthworm that kills HIV virus stone dead. But they can't use it. They can't get it to survive. They've done research for the last five years. There's five countries doing research on it, people, and I think that'll be the breakthrough for HIV virus. I just mentioned it. It changes solubility through organisms, and then there's a very interesting thing that very few people know about earthworms. They got dorsal pores, and that dorsal pores are connected to the, one of their stomachs, and if they come in contact with heavy metals, they encapsulate the heavy metal into a capsule, and they excrete it or excrete it through the dorsal pore. It doesn't even go through the whole digestive system, and this membrane or capsule shell is up to 10 times harder than Teflon. And up to today, they don't know what it is. Just mention this, and this makes it very important in waste management, makes it important in uh, 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 purifying water in an artificial wetland system. Any heavy metal, toxic metals can be, of course you can't, destroy it. But if you encapsulate it, the plant doesn't take it up. So it is taken out of the environment. So cattle and animals and humans can use food again. And this is what happened in Russia, Ukraine, Belarus after Chernobyl. Uh, I can talk all day about the disaster there. It's one of those man-made messes that we do regular. Uh, and this is why earthworms are used so well. I'm not talking about the agricultural. I'll show you slides to show you how efficient it is. I've been doing it 14 years, and they never let me down yet. <laughs> and now we come to another thing that people don't understand, or knew about, or very few people understand. They produce antifungal, antibacterial excretion, antibiotics. And there's a thought now that most or at least over 500 different antibiotics has been extracted from the soil that has originated out of earthworms. Depending on what the earthworm eat, depending on what type of antibiotic is needed, the earthworm produces it in its body. And this is what makes it such a wonderful tool to restore the damaged and contaminated earth that we live in, that we abuse all the time. And then you get the feces coming out or the cast. I always call this type of digestive system a reverse digestive system. All other animals eat good food and excretes rubbish. Earthworm takes the rubbish and processes it into an excellent product. To give you an idea how well it is, that cost at the moment is probably is now converted into a probiotic and probably the best probiotic in the world. We uh, trials on animals have proved that they have complete tick resistance, and they did trials in Namibia, and there's a big project starting. Uh, they want to produce this probiotic there specifically for tick control because the old ticks got resistance to uh, the. the uh, uh, nematicides and things for ticks. Another thing about it, it's a very small quantity. Give you an idea, a teaspoonful of earthworm castings can have as much as 40 million bacteria, actinomycetes, uh, mycelia, fungi, you name it, all living in that little bit of stuff. I uh, Just for the background, in farming unity and in urban agriculture, all household waste, organic waste, animal waste can be used to feed 
earthworms. And earthworms will produce this. What I want to show you now is how efficient it is. This is seedlings in seed trays that's used 10, 15 years, continuous till they disintegrate and never have to be sterilized with no disease on them. There is some more. Now I want to show you young strawberries grown as a crop. As you can see, there's no spot, no disease on it. The same strawberries at the end of the season and still no disease on it. And this is what earthworm castings do to the soil. There's green beans in full production. And the same green beans at the end of the season giving 25 to 30 tons a hectare. People, a little plot, 10 by 10 meters, the production is 250 uh, 250 to 300 kilogram of green beans in a portion that small. The same with maize, they've done with the trials, just to show how efficient it is, especially since maize is such a major crop in the country, 800 kilogram, and there's conventional fertilizer, you can't see the difference between the maize, and both yielded 8.5 tons a hectare. In other words, what this does, your production cost for the poor, all you need is earthworms, you can feed them newspaper, especially in the rural area, you can feed them animal dung, leftover food, waste straw, grass, clippings, pills, you name it, and you feed it to the earthworms and you can produce vermicompost. And this vermicompost can provide a family of abundant food. If you look at these beans and yields, I've got some more slides here. How does 200 tons a hectare sounds to you people? It's the highest yield recorded. There's only one small, I think, in Zimbabwe where they've equaled this yield. And this is planted in grass, no cultivation needed. Put the runners in, put vermicompost in, and voila, there's your 200 tons a hectare of sweet potatoes. Tomatoes with no rust. <laughs> Just to give an idea, this is tomatoes on 1.5 meter rows and look how they grew. We harvested from November till end of April, no rust, no disease, no insects. And only possible with earthworms. And then in conclusion, I just want to read the end of that quote. The same Professor Egonen wrote, all the chemical fertilizer factories in the world cannot compete with earthworms in the amount of organic fertilizer produced. They are the guarantor of health and prosperity of everything living on earth. Their health is our health as well as the health of our children and grandchildren. That is why the main concern of humankind as a whole and of each individual person in particular is to maintain and increase the number of earthworms in the soil of agricultural land. Humanity won't survive if we don't take care of and increase the earthworm population. Thank you very much. <laughs>